welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new and welcome to my May reset video. So um, basically this is kind of like partially me recapping the month of April and just kind of sharing what went down for me personally and for us as a couple in the month of April and then also just kind of sharing with you how I actually prep for May. I've already done a dedicated video for our May budget and I've also done a dedicated video for the May plan with me but um, I like to kind of get those things out of the way beforehand and I normally just film it while I'm doing that but normally some things you know kind of take place between when I'm prepping the planner or prepping our budget for the new month and then when the actual beginning of the month gets here. So today is April the 30th and you guys should see this video tomorrow <laughs> if I have my life together. So it's the end of the month and I can rightfully recap our budget, share with you wins and losses, share with you a huge win slash loss, aka how much we still owed the feds in the state of Georgia for our 2021 taxes. So stay tuned for that. It's a lot of money. I contemplated just taking the money and paying off our vehicle. But anyway, um, we're gonna talk about all of those things in today's video. So if that is of interest to you, then please keep watching. So the first thing that I wanna do is get on my computer to look at my video ideas for the month of May, just to kind of try to plan out those videos. The more I can try to plan out the videos, even if it's like months in advance, like I try to plan, like if I have a video idea, I try to schedule it on my calendar. And so the more I can do that, the easier it will be for me to kind of carry out uh, filming in, in my side hustle. If you happen to stumble upon this video because in your new, I am Shay. Obviously, I live in the state of Georgia with my husband of almost five, no, almost six years. And um, we have a puppy that my husband rescued last year. Well, she's like two now. Uh, what else? We both work full time in education, so that's fun, and that's pretty much it. We don't really lead interesting lives, but I have always been very organized, very planned out. Um, I feel like the more that I can plan out things, the more spontaneous we can be. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone but me, but I feel like there's always this struggle between being very planned out and being spontaneous. So as far as I'm concerned, the more planning I can do and more planned out we can be, the more spontaneous we can be. As an example, if we have our budget situated and we know what our budget is and we have all of our bills on auto pay, which we do every month, then that means we get to be more spontaneous. We don't have to sit down um, if we wanna take a trip or something like a, some day beach trip or you know an overnight trip or whatever. We don't really have to talk about and kind of structure that and figure, plan that out and see what that's really gonna look like because we already know what we can afford and what we can't like our budget tells us what we can afford and what we can't similarly let's say you know we're planned out for the month and we have a dentist appointment this day and you know this appointment or that appointment that lets me know when we have to like actually do things and be places and then the rest of the time we get to be reckless like this weekend we have nothing last weekend we had a wedding and our day kind of centered around that this weekend we have nothing which means that we'll spend the whole weekend on the patio like that's pretty much what we'll do or if we want to get up and go out to eat we can or if we just want to be reckless for whatever reason we get to do that because we know where we're supposed to be and when we're supposed to be there and so that leaves a lot of room for spontaneity that's just my personal opinion so i just want to look at my google calendar kind of look at the video ideas i have for the month of may and then i think i'll be ready and planned out and then we can move on to you know actually talking about april and talking about the month ahead so the google calendar is where i kind of pre-plan all of the things meaning that um if i get an invite I can just RSVP and it's on my calendar automatically. Um, I have a family calendar, a personal calendar, and a business calendar. So if it has nothing to do with my husband, then it goes on the personal calendar. Or if it's a business thing, it goes on the business calendar. But you're looking at all of them right now. So they're kind of all in here. So I like to also put on here tasks like um, pick up meds. I have to do that on Monday or, you know, nail appointments and just other events in here. So you'll see all of this in my actual planner because that's where I spend most of my time. I kind of just use this for pre-planning and then that's it. So anyway, I'm looking at my videos and I'm glad I'm doing this because today is Saturday. Um, I just mentioned I work full time in education. So when I film, I have to do it either after work, which I don't like doing, or I have to do it on the weekends. So I'm trying to release the May monthly reset tomorrow you see it's on the business calendar. So that is all well and good. I'll be able to likely get that edited. But on the 4th, I am, whoa, 
on the fourth, I want to release how to get started with digital planning. And so I have this long drawn out video that I want to record um, and just kind of hitting on how to get started with digital planning. And so I'm realizing that it really would behoove me to at least film the bulk of that this weekend. So much of the video is just gonna be a recording of my actual iPad. So I really don't have to make like a, an appearance in that video at all. Like I don't even have to get on camera if I don't want to. I might get on there to do an intro, but I don't have to. So it would behoove me to maybe get started with working on that video only because I like to edit on Mondays and then um, Tuesday is kind of like a backup. Like if I have to do Tuesday, I will, but I really like to have the video edited at least on Monday because I'm going to release on Wednesday. I shoot for two uploads a week, which is very, very ambitious. I don't always make make it, but that's what I shoot for. So yeah, I just like planning out the video so I can know what's what. So really, I really should either later today or maybe even tomorrow, which maybe not because I'll have to edit this video tomorrow, but I really should start getting like start filming this video again. I don't even have to make an appearance technically because it's going to be all about an iPad. So. Anyway, that's just kind of the whole purpose of why I like to kind of see what's up next. I have this video actually already filmed, so that's good. And then I don't have any of these other <laughs> videos filmed. But I think that, um, okay, that's a sponsored video. And that's due here, so I should really put that on. That's important. So I'm going to put sponsored, sponsored video due. That's very important. So I'm going to put that on my business calendar and it's due all day, right? No, it's due on the 15th. Just kidding. It's due the week before. What is happening? Okay. It's due on the 15th. So that's important for me to know so I can know like I need to have this video filmed and edited and submit it to the brand the week before. Um, so I think everything else looks good. It looks well balanced. I like to do planning, organization, productivity types of videos and also budget videos because that's kind of what I like. I also like cleaning and organizing my actual home. So I'll be able to kind of, you know, share some of that in this video. So I think it's a well balanced um, situation here. Okay, so our Google Calendar looks good. Again, I really like using that so I can get notifications about where I'm supposed to be. That's kind of the most important element of it. I also like planning out videos in Google Calendar because believe it or not, if this thing doesn't notify me that I'm supposed to release a video on whatever day, I could literally forget. So everything looks good in Google Calendar if you ask me and I think it's all good and set up for the month. Like I said, most of everything else goes in my planner. So let's actually hop into my planner. Okay, so here is our monthly overview for our budget for the month of April. If you wanna see me setting up this, I have a video entitled April Budget with me that you can check out. But for the most part, um, all of our bills are on auto pay. Everything actually that we do is on auto pay to include our investing and all of the things. So I just like to come in here and check when the bills are paid. So this is just kind of like our monthly overview. Now let's talk about our actual budget. So we budgeted that we were going to, we were hoping that we were going to bring in $6,000, 5757 from our full-time jobs and 243 from the business. I was only paying us 243 or any money from the business just to get to an even number of $6,000. Otherwise, April wasn't even a month worth paying ourselves from the business, especially since we actually had miscellaneous income. So, in total we brought in 7618 from our full-time jobs. My husband got a bonus. I pay us from the business at the beginning of the month, whether it's a large amount or small amount. So I had already paid us 22851 and I just didn't pay us anymore because there was no point. And again, that amount wasn't even, you know, a whole lot that contributed to anything. So I just kind of left it at that, which then indicated that we were technically under budget for business. Green is on budget or um, under budget and red is over budget. And then we got 254 in miscellaneous income, bringing our total income to $8,101.06. So all of our housing and utilities are bills that I typically know before the month starts. But um, actually, we had a little issue here because I budgeted the wrong amount for our water slash sewer. So, and then all of that's actually messed up. So let's just erase this. And then we're just gonna put the over budget highlight and then 
will be good to go because the amount is actually correct because how I got that amount is adding up all of these categories. So this is actually the exact amount. Otherwise it would be 192522. Like if I had did the math and added 3770 accidentally, it wouldn't be the, the amount that it actually is. So I do remember adding those up and using this number. I just had it as under budget when it was really over budget. Okay. So for total for our housing and utilities, we spent 1930. And then we have health. So we have life insurance for me and my husband, wellness plan for our puppy, 9954 as expected. And then if you come up here to personal, we budgeted 1500, of course, with the cost of inflation and all of the shenanigans that we partook in in the month of April, we were over budget at $2,200 and then Amazon Music, Netflix, and Peacock was the same. Somebody asked me how I keep Netflix at $9.99 and that's just the amount that they offer us for one TV. We're only two people, I don't watch TV so there's no point for me, like I do, but like I don't really, I, don't, I definitely don't watch Netflix. <laughs> if I do watch TV, it's probably I'm watching Charmed on CW and I'm watching Peacock a lot. So anyway, we don't need Netflix streaming on two devices or whatever. So we pay $9.99. Um, that had us over budget a lot. So instead of $15.23, we actually ended up spending $2.230. It's worth notating that shopping, this isn't like buying clothes and shoes and things like that. We don't go shopping really. This is for food, groceries, dates, um, even some like picking up tabs for other people when we go out to eat because um, that's just one way that we like to spend our money is just you know treating other people those types of things so that's what shopping is it's literally everything that we need to spend money on that we don't capture in any of these other categories so a lot of it is food restaurants like groceries restaurants any date nights that we have gas food for our dog that's kind of where the bulk of that comes into play so for savings, we actually were going to not pay ourselves from the business and to actually keep that money in our account because we knew we had to pay taxes. So we saved a thousand for taxes, which I didn't even have to reflect this in our budget, but it just, it's just kind of how it worked out. For sinking funds, we were going to allocate 891. We allocated 925. And a lot of this probably doesn't make sense if you didn't watch our budget video for April or even for May. So I definitely recommend checking out that. We were not gonna do any general saving, but because we got the bonus, we actually saved 1349. And so therefore for savings, we are looking at 3275. We have two debts that we're currently paying on. This one, even if we do our self-imposed minimum, 200 will be paid off in at the end of the year. And then the car payment, it even if we did 314.34 every month, it wouldn't be paid off for about four and a half years. So our aim is to pay off that sooner than that, but we're in no rush currently. Uh, my husband is a GA educator, Georgia educator, so we do pay 5083 for that. And so if you add up all of these totals here, every total that we have, you will get $8,101.06, which if you notice here, that's actually the actual income that we brought in. That's because we do an every dollar budget. So we allocated all of those funds, whether they went to saving or debt or whatever the case is, we allocated it for all of those so all of that money went somewhere our balance in our bank account is not zero that is not what this means <laughs> that's probably one of my biggest pet peeves doing an every dollar budget doesn't mean budgeting your money to zero or budgeting your account to zero that is the craziest thing i've ever heard because i mean i think that would breed so much anxiety that would be the complete opposite of effective money management it just means allocating a job to all of your income. But let me just show you May briefly. This is May. Again, I have a whole video on it. And then this is our budget for May. The one thing that we have to do is we have to go to the front to talk about our goals for April because we need to see if we met them or not. So for investing $2,000, we opted to not do that. We are on a fire journey, financial independence, retire early. So because of that, we normally put a few thousand dollars, a couple thousand dollars each month to retirement in addition to the retirement that we have set up through our jobs. But in April, we decided not to do anything extra because we knew we had the tax bill 
that was larger than our down payment for our house. We'll get to that momentarily. We did invest 15% of our paychecks. Ew. Um, we did secure lawn care. So we were going to get somebody to cut our grass because it's annoying. But then we just were like, by the time that we pay somebody um, for the, you know, two months, we might as well have just purchased another lawn mower. So we just bought a lawn mower to replace our broken lawn mower. And, you know, we did secure lawn care. Uh, spring break trip. We didn't go anywhere for spring break. We stayed at home. Oops. So we did not go. That's a goal that did not get accomplished. I did purchase the wedding gift. Actually, I just gave cash for the wedding that we went to. We paid our taxes. My husband's copay. He didn't have a copay. We renewed Sirius, which also came out of the shopping budget because I forgot to allocate for it in our budget. But mainly, we pay Sirius every six months for Sirius for our car. And every six months, they send me some outrageous bill. I refuse to pay for it. And then I call and ask if they have any promotions. And then they give me an amount that's like half the price. So I really don't know how to budget for it anyway. So therefore, I just took it out of our shopping budget. And then I did pay my copay. I actually had a copay plus an actual doctor's bill. So I just paid that. Those are the goals and the tasks that were related to our finances for the month of April. So before we dive further in the video, I do wanna share some cool things that took place in the month of April as it regarding our finances. First of all, we really went in with our patio project. And so that's also where a lot of the shopping money came from because we started our patio makeover situation in the month of April and we're pretty much finished with it, but that's where a lot of the money went for shopping for the month of April. And we really just did that because we knew my husband was going to get, oh, I lied. He got three bonuses in the month of April, three, no, two, two bonuses in the month of April. So that's why we went ahead and went on with the patio project. So we did proceed with that, which was pretty exciting. We paid one of our medical bills. We did hit a milestone in April where we had a thousand dollars in our sinking funds, which was pretty exciting since we've only been saving for a few months, but then we had to pay some things and now our sinking funds amount is below 1000 but we are still going to add some money to our sinking funds and we are going to add $124.29. So let's talk about sinking funds. It's kind of a complicated thing that I have going on, but basically we do have 10 sinking funds and our sinking funds are um, kind of housed through our Ally bank account. And so we have 10 accounts. We have a medical sinking fund where we're saving up money towards future medical expenses, just random ones, and then ones that we really anticipate like the birth of our first child. We have a holidays and birthday sinking fund, an anniversary sinking fund, a pet sinking fund, clothing and beauty, giving and donating, vacations, transportation and tags, entertainment and home maintenance. So um, we want to get to a place where the sinking funds are kind of at a cap so right now we're kind of putting money in and taking money out and putting money in and taking money out. And so unless you have like an excess, a, an excessive amount of money to really jumpstart your sinking funds, that's probably going to hold true for you. I feel like as you're saving up, you might be spending money from the sinking fund. So it might seem counterproductive, but keep going. You'll get there. So I would like maybe our overall sinking funds amount to sit at, I don't know, I'm going to throw out a random number. Let's say like 10 to 15,000. Right now, we don't have enough excess money to really build up those accounts, but that's kind of the goal. The goal is to get those accounts at an exact number, and then they just kind of coast that way until we actually use the money. Okay, so at this point, I've transferred the 12429 from our checking account to our savings account, which is where our sinking funds are housed. So we need to distribute that money. So if you see in the core savings, we have one, two, four, two, nine. And so we just need to distribute it. So we have the core savings, which is kind of like a resting spot. That's like our, our main savings account. And then we have the buckets, which I just read off to you. So um, the reason why I know where this money needs to go is because our every dollar budget actually tells us how much money is remaining. And that's the amount that I transferred to our uh, sinking funds and now we need to distribute it so it says that 1007 is going to go to medical so the annoying part is that we have to do the math ourselves and add the amounts to what's in our accounts 
So it's kind of annoying. I wish that Ally could fix that. But in the meantime, so we're just gonna do 3284 plus what we have to add to the medical fund, which is $10.07. And then that gives us 4291. So we're just gonna change the total to 4291. For holidays and birthdays, we are going to add $25. So thankfully it's already at zero. So all we have to do is go down and add 25. Next up for anniversary, we are going to add $50. So that should be 20225. Ooh, oh, God. okay. I was gonna say I messed that up. 20225. All right. Then we have pets. We have a dollar and 28 cents to add to pets, which is gonna be um, 12225. Oh, plus 128, which is gonna give us one, two, three, eight, three. Then we have clothing and beauty. Looks like we're gonna add $25. So that should be 130, 63, if my math is correct. And then we have 1294 left, which means that my math is wrong somewhere because we should have more than 25 we should have more than 12.94 left we should have 16.49 that means i just did some math incorrectly and i think do we think it's here Okay, so I don't know if that math is correct, but we're gonna go with 127.08 for clothing and beauty. And then we technically are supposed to put 16.49 to giving slash donating. I want to kind of focus on this because we have two weddings coming up and I just wanna make sure that we have enough money in those accounts to account for these wedding gifts. So for giving and donating, we're just gonna put the remaining balance, which is 114. 31, which currently gives us about 115 to work with for the gifts. So I can go ahead and start shopping for the gifts. Plus, plus we're gonna allocate money in May and June for gifts as well, if I need more money than this. So that is gonna be how we have distributed our money. As you can see, we have 816.70 for our current balance and zero dollars, zero for our core savings. So hopefully in May, we will have enough to kind of get that back over a thousand because that was fun being at 1000. So let's go ahead and save this. Okay, so let's talk about the little investing that we did do in the month of April. Of course, we invested 15% of our paychecks to retirement through our jobs. And then we did not do any additional investing with our joint brokerage and our Roth IRAs, but we did um, invest through Stash. I actually have $20 per week going towards stash or $20 bi-weekly. And so by the end of the year, the hope is that I'll have about $1,000. So I'm up to 390.96 at the filming of this video. It's April the 30th. I did have, I did hit 400 like a few days ago, which was a huge milestone, I thought. But you know, investments ebb and flow. So we're down right now at 390.96, but I'm happy with that number. Okay, so let's talk about our April 2022 overview. Kind of a lot of the same things. This month's focus was to work on the patio. I wanted to continue reading my will book, continuing my saga to declutter, uh, deep clean and organize this whole house. I started this in December of 2021. I'm almost finished though. I have like one room to go. Um, we went on our date night, purchased a wedding gift, completed the patio. I did not study for my clinical exam or submit the, the TASB form, so I'll have to do that in May. Um, all of these are kind of related to my full-time job, got all of those taken care of. I did not work on my new business venture that I've probably been talking about for like three years now. That's because I don't feel like it, so I might feel like it in the summer. I feel like it would make the most sense to do a summer launch since I'm off work in the summer. Pay the feds, didn't set up the lawn service because we opted to, you know, get our own lawnmower and all of that um, and to take care of our own lawn like doing all the things that my husband is doing uh, we did a lot of things around the home which was important to us 
and let's talk about my life balance section. So I had on here some activities that I wanted to do one or more for each section. It's just, you know, comes with the planner. So it makes sense for me to take advantage of it. I did relax during spring break and off days. I won't say that I relaxed too much, but I definitely was in like full on, full blown relax mode. Um, I did not meditate weekly. Um, did not do low carb 20 times a month or exercise 12 times a month. The, both of these are kind of debatable because my idea, I need to kind of define what I would consider to be low carb, first of all, because that's important. And then I also need to, I've switched around some things in May because it's not really so much about actually exercising, although that is important, but really about like closing my rings. So anyway, I'll kind of further define that in May. I did lots of friend dates and calls. I continued to read the book, but I did not study for my exam, mainly because I booked it for the summer. So I don't really need to start the end of summer almost. So I really don't need to study until then. Also, it's kind of one of those things <laughs> that you either know or don't know. So, I mean, it, it either I'm going to pass or fail. But I do want to kind of look over any material, you know, refresh myself, um, basically study the DSM-5 <laughs> or, you know, that whole type of thing. And then we did complete our patio and hung out there a lot. Now let's talk about our April 2022 review. My personal highlight was relaxing for basically a month straight and my professional highlight was signing up for our licensure exam or signing up for my licensure exam. I'd say I had some other highlights like I went to the doctor on the 29th today and wait was it today? I think so. No was it yesterday? Yesterday. Yes, yesterday, and I had a very good report, so that's probably my personal highlight. Um, I got to spring, spend spring break with my hubby and my dog. I got to meet my friend's new baby. Found a low-carb mimosa recipe, so I've kind of been super into that. Basically, you need extra, 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 extra dry champagne and then low-carb or low-sugar um, mimosa. So. I, or low carb or low sugar orange juice. So I've just been happy to kind of find that as something that I like and can add to my repertoire. Also went to the wine bar with my friend Alika who I haven't hung out with in years due to the situation that we have been living through. And me and my husband had lots of game nights. Major accomplishments included paying 17,000 or 16,000 however much in cash to the IRS in the state of Georgia. I secured another long-term brand deal which have only been thing that's only been a thing that has been taking place for me in 2022 so that's exciting i switched mobile carriers i unlocked my iphone because i had been with cricket for six months and because i bought the phone in cash from cricket I, they told me i had to stick with them for six months before they would unlock it so got that unlocked asap <laughs> and then you know finish the patio same old same old Next month, I want to focus on spending more intentionally and getting back to my routine, specifically my evening routine. And let's do our little monthly check-in for emotional, mental, for health and fitness, uh, kind of like a 3.2, somewhere between 3 and 4, spirituality 3, social relationships, probably like closer to 4, honestly, professional career 3 to 4, probably closer to 3, finances 3, learning education 4. I actually attended a conference for work um, the past couple days, Thursday and Friday. And so not only did I do that, but I just feel like I really took in a lot of inf information in April. And then hobbies and recreation, probably closer to four because um, we were chilling so hard and just playing games together and going on walks and taking rides and I don't know that we left the house a whole lot in April, which is fine, but we just had so much fun doing our little recreational activities here. So this is our um, April review. Here is my kind of vision board situation for the month of April. Um, I have a picture of my iPad. Me and Lady had lots of snuggles um, during spring break. I got a new Apple Watch. Again, our sinking funds were at a thousand, but came down from that. I really love this nail set. Again, super into the extra dry champagne. I explored a lot about digital planning in the month of April, that's why you see that. My stash value was almost to 400, which is again, almost to 400. Patio, selfies with 
my husband selfies by myself and of course we attended the wedding which was our first same-sex wedding so this is kind of like my mood board for April and I plan to continue to do this as I've been doing for the last few months so as you know I am using a horizontal planner for the month of May and this is definitely working out for me much much better but I have all of the meetings for work and some of the videos planned out and all of those types of things you know kind of scheduled for the month of May uh, we do have a Myrtle Beach wedding my sister's getting married I am in that wedding as the matron of honor and then we're thinking about going to Florida the only reason why we're thinking about doing that is because our cousin was here and she's going and we have three or four sets of cousins that all live in um, Florida and so we were she was going to pick us up and we were going to go with her but she doesn't want to come back for like a week and she was like is that too long i'm like yes that's definitely too long mainly because i don't even want to know how much it would be to board our dog for that long and i don't know so we may be going to florida and it would be fun to go for memorial day weekend so even if we don't go with her and we drive down and spend you know three days or so there that could be fun so um, kind of planning for that I need to kind of figure that out we have the beach trip ready and set but we do need to figure out if we're going to Florida or not I do have some business tasks to get done submit all of the sponsored content and then publish all the sponsored content so basically I just need to you know be mindful of all of the not sponsored is a sponsor it's really like brand deals remember so just kind of being mindful of the brand deals that I have going on because three is actually plenty I have over here important dates and I just highlighted babysitting and I also highlighted the days that I'm off work I'm taking off the 20th for a wedding you know for the wedding shenanigans and then I'm off Memorial Day did I mention yeah I mentioned that in the previous video the previous plan with me video that I may I'm on call for helping my friend with babysitting so we'll have to see if I need to do that but let's talk about some personal goals I want to lose five pounds read two chapters of the will book which if you're a reader you're probably cringing that I just want to do two chapters in one month but like I told you I like reading whenever I feel like it like I don't want to feel pressured ever to read a book so I just want to do two chapters I feel like that would be a uh, a very good thing I also want to purchase the wedding gift so I was thinking of giving money but then I may want to order something off of you know Etsy something custom so I need to figure that out also I need to give my niece a birthday gift basically I sent her a gift in March it came back in April and so I just have the gift here it was actually a cash gift so she wants me to give her the money when we get to Myrtle Beach so she'll have spending money so I need to like give that gift back to her basically but I don't want to forget to and be mindful of that again I need to submit that form which has been on my goal list for probably like a year for professional I am going to a planner meetup in June and I'm also going to send swag so I need to send swag in May preferably like the beginning of May so they have it at least a month in advance I wanted to secure two sponsorship opportunities so even though I have some opportunities already in the works I want to continue to you know be mindful of that like I mentioned and continue to secure some brand deals so that they're always kind of there also I need to reconcile the business budget which takes a whole lot out of me so that's why it's on my goal list study for my licensure exam and then sign up for an influencer platform so I guess I just didn't want an M on this day Ooh, I definitely don't want that in because I'm supposed to I was supposed to do this a long time ago oh, come on girl around the house I want to continue the patio project again I don't know if we're finished or if we're not I guess only time will tell spring cleaning I have a few projects that I want to do and then I, we have a lot of things that we need to hang and if we hang these things and do all of our spring cleaning and continue the patio project we will be finished with our home related duties and tasks before summer gets here like before we're out of school for the summer so that is the plan emotional and mental I want to go on a solo date by myself spirituality Mother's Day service health and fitness solo walks lots of solo walks social relationships time with my nieces when we go to the wedding I just want to 
take that in because I haven't seen them in a year. Learning, education, study for exam, hobbies and re recreation, weekend patio living. Here are my trackers and I did add some goals. So that's probably new from if you watch the May plan with me video. And then I added all of my sheets here. I'm starting on my travel planner pages and this is my aesthetic for the month of May. I also made it the home screen for my iPad and the lock screen. The lock screen I made in Canva and I just added the calendar for the month of May and I have the same vibe going on on my phone for my home screen and my lock screen and this I made in Canva. Okay you guys so that is it for my May reset routine. That's how April went down. I'm looking forward to May. We get out of school in May so I'm just really excited to spend the summer on the patio and traveling with my husband. I am looking forward it's at May. I can't wait for May. June, July, and August are going to be superb. I am claiming it. I hope you guys were able to use this video as inspiration to better ready you or prepare for the month of May. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.